Hi, Chris Smith here, Director of Storytelling Schools, where every child learns to be a storyteller as a natural way of learning both language and subject content. In the previous video, we talked about our method for teaching stories to children. Hear, map, step, speak. In this video, we're going to look at the hear part, where the teacher tells the story to the class, and you're going to see what that looks like in practice. First of all, why tell the story rather than read it or show some video clip? Well, there's three main reasons. First, you're teaching storytelling to the class by demonstrating it. Because they will have a positive listening experience, they'll have more motivation to do it themselves, and they'll have lots of ideas about ways to do it because they've seen you storytelling. So it's essential that in a storytelling school, every teacher tells the story themselves. Secondly, storytelling is really engaging. It's a great way to engage them with the language and the content of the stories without them even having to try because they love being involved. It's not the same with a book at all. Thirdly, with storytelling, each child creates an own independent picture of the story in their own imagination. They're not looking at the picture in a book and remembering it. They're creating their own inner story and gaining confidence in that way in their own imaginations so that when they get to write and retell, they're telling in a way that they see it, not copying somebody else. And that's a great way to build their own sense of pride in their own unique achievement. Now, here's what it looks like in practice in a Key Stage 1 classroom. In this clip, you can see me telling stories to a Key Stage 1 group. Notice I'm pitching the language level at a level higher than their normal speaking level, but not too high that they get lost. Also notice I'm getting them to join in, so it keeps them engaged and makes them feel part of the story. They sing the songs and chants with me, sometimes they answer questions, sometimes they join in with sounds or movements if I ask them to. In that way, the experience of being in the story is vivid for them and they remain engaged all the way through. Once upon a time, there was a hunter and he was a strong hunter. He was a good hunter and one day he was walking through the forest when he came to a tree. And he looked up into the branches of the tree, and there was a bird with his golden beak, green wings, and a little blue tail. And he thought, hmm, what a beautiful bird. I'm not going to shoot that bird, I'm going to leave it. But then the bird pushed back its wings. Can you push back your wings? Stuck out its beak, like this. Can you stick out its beak? Wiggled its tail, and went like this. Can you do that? And the hunter, he was cross. He didn't like that sound at all. He says, you be quiet or you'll be sorry. But the bird pushed back its wings, stuck out its feet, wiggled its tail, and went like this. Two, three. Now he was really cross. He says, once more and you're dead meat. And the bird pushed back its wings, stuck out its feet, we got this bum and went. Yeah. And so the hunter he aimed his arrow, he shot his arrow, and it went right through the heart of the bird. And the bird fell to the ground, not moving. That'll teach you to make fun of me, he said. Picked it up, put it in his bag, and he started walking home. Now, in this next video clip, you can see me telling the same story to a group of Key Stage 2 children. The language level is a bit higher, but notice they're still enthusiastically joining in with the story. You're dead meat, and the bird did it again. <laughs> so he, he, he took his bow, and he slotted an arrow into the bow, and he pulled back on the string until it was taking its full strength. And then he aimed it at the heart of the bird, and... He loosed the arrow into the bird's heart and it fell down to the ground, unmoving. Good shivers. Mm. Shivery sound affects me like this. Can you do that? Can you shiver? The hands are crossed now. He said, I hate that so song. I don't want to hear that song anymore. I will shut up after. So, 
Now maybe you'd like to have a go. If you want to be a storytelling teacher, then you need to do three things. First, you need to choose some stories that you like. You can go into our handbook and choose from 147 different stories. I'm confident there'll be a few in there that you like. Secondly, you have to prepare it. That means using the hear, map, step, speak process that you'll find out more about in the next set of videos. And then when you've practiced a few times and pitched it at the right level for your class, it's time to tell it. Sit them down, settle them down, relax and have fun with the story. If you enjoy it, they will love it. Inspirational teaching and inspirational storytelling go together so well. Learn to be a storytelling teacher. You'll engage your children, inspire your children and end up getting great results for everyone.